So I got an email that a package was delivered. I forgot what it was. I went and checked. Here it is. The newest Fun City Editions Blu-ray. And I think the first non-Vinegar Syndrome related one, but still Fun City Editions. The slipcover feels very familiar. So it feels like it fits right in, to be honest. But I've never seen this movie. So I figured, let's watch it. Be right back. And I'm back. Party Girl. I enjoyed it. Definitely, yeah. I didn't think I had seen it, and I definitely have not. I had not. I do recognize quite a few people in the movie. Parker Posey, Liv Schreiber in particular. There's another actor that in a very small part that I think is was more like friends with Parker Posey based off the uh, interview. I watched the uh, special feature interview with her on there. But I think it's the same guy that showed, that's in Chasing Amy. In fact, let me double check that real quick. So yeah, he's Dwight, I believe Dwight Ewell. I don't know if I have the last name pronounced right, but he was Hooper X in Chasing Amy. I think he also had a small part in Dogma. But he shows up a couple times briefly in Party Girl. That was kind of fun to see. I should also mention Guillermo Diaz is recognizable. I'm not 100% sure where from, although most recently, I think he's in Freeway, which I did did recently watch and make a video of on this channel. So that might be why he seems so familiar to me. The director's mother, Sasha Van Schorler, is has a really uh, good and important part in the movie and then speaking of which the director is daisy von schurler she also was one of the uh, primary writers got the sense of this while watching it though it didn't completely occur to me but this is very much a comedy i mean it did that occurred to me but i didn't really know going in that it was a comedy it becomes very apparent quickly that it's like a quirky comedy but it's almost like a throwback in a little bit of a way to like a older screwball comedy. I mean, it's from the nineties, but so older than that. And you can see those influences all over it and the attitude of the main character and everything. So it's kind of like taking a movie like that and setting it forward in time and then watching back at it from now. I mean, it's kind of an interesting experience watching it now. It's also for its time was very, you know, quote unquote, feminist i guess which it is but it's in a very it feels like a very natural way compared to something that you would call feminist now it's very well done on that front in a way that is rare a lot of smart people and some smart writing and the quirkiness is all there and intentional you can definitely see all kinds of other like new york comedy influences there's definitely an influence coming from uh, Scorsese's After Hours. If you watch the special features on here, they go through, I watched part of the director's interview and she goes through the influences. Parker Posey's interview is also interesting and in some of the influences from her perspective on her character and the movie and why she did it. Yeah, just very well put together package. I have not, you know, checked out the commentary, but it's almost certainly worthwhile. And Fun City Editions has, again, done a great job uh, bringing a movie to Blu-ray and out to all of us. And it is still, even without the Vinegar Syndrome involvement on this particular one, it still has a slipcover. I ordered this through Amazon. It still came in good shape uh, somehow. <laughs> and I'm pretty happy. And it's like the stock of the slipcover is... Very reminiscent of the quality level of vinegar syndrome. So I'm not a huge slipcover person, but I have quite a few of them just because that's how these things come if you buy them early a lot of the time. And that does make me feel like maybe I try to get every slipcover, but the reality is I don't care that much. So sometimes it doesn't happen. Got this one though. So party girl, uh, uh, it's definitely a very rewatchable, quotable. You should check it out if you haven't seen it. You should revisit it if you haven't in a while. 
It's just basically about a uh, young female New Yorker in the 90s who's a little bit too much of a party girl trying to figure her life out and get it back together and do it for herself and, and not with the help of someone else directly anyway or you know, trying to get a career going, rather, right? Still does, plays well now, and it's got a bit of nostalgia going from the fact that it's 90s, but it captures something of the time period it was made in, and I think it's also capturing something from the influences that came before it. So, uh, And it's, in a way, relevant now, and probably a way that was never intended, because it's an example of doing something the right way. <laughs> You know, it's still good. It's still entertaining, and it's not necessarily hammering. It's the messaging's there, but it's not like hammering you over the head. It's not putting it the message above the entertainment value. Buy it. <laughs>